Okay, and welcome back to the fourth video in the series of creating our Google site. So now we've created the About Me page after we've created our website. And so the next thing we want to do is look at our rubric and see what the next um, page is. And I'm actually going to create the resources page next. So in order to add a new page to our website, we will want to click on this button right here that says new page. When it opens up, you name your page. I will name mine resources. It adds the URL in. We choose a page template and I'm going to choose web page. Make sure that you put your web page at top level and then go ahead and click create. A new page will open up called resources and we are ready to work. So the directions say that we will want to create four text boxes in a two column layout. So the first thing I want to do is go into layout and choose two column layout. Now there is two column simple and two column. I would like you to choose the two column layout. We choose that and we have four new boxes. Number one, number two, number three, and number four. I'm going to leave the numbers there for you just as a reference. You will not need to put the numbers in there. As a matter of fact, I don't want the numbers in there. So it is just for me to be able to help you. I'm going to go into box two and I'm going to insert a text box and I'm going to label it. Um, so at this point we decide what, so you know what your content is, you will decide what you're going to be teaching. So this has to do with the Google Doc, the backward design that you created, what that concept is that you're going to be teaching. I would actually start gathering references for that digital story slash web quest slash um, podcast, anything we're going to be creating. So I'm going to choose history. Um, and for this text box, I'm actually going to choose World War One. I. I leave everything blank. And I'm just putting this here for your uh, reference and you don't have to do that. I will hit save. Then I come down under the text box. Now let me give you a little cheat trick that I like to show my students. When you are working in the text boxes, I like to give myself some extra space by hitting the enter or return key. That way I have more real estate space. Otherwise, boxes start getting on top of boxes and it's difficult. So I'm going right under that text box. I'm going to insert another text box. Remember, I wanted four text boxes. And I'm putting this here again for your benefit and creating. Now I'm coming over to the other side into box three. I will insert a text box and we will write Vietnam War and under that I will do the same thing give myself some more real estate space by clicking the return or enter key and then inserting another text box and this one let's see I can put I'm drawing a blank at another war. Uh, maybe I want to put in history games. And then hit save. Now you'll notice that they are ugly text boxes here. And we also have a number four still and a number one. The number one box and the number four box will be used later on in the semester. And so you will want to leave those blank. Make sure you leave those blank. Otherwise, your text boxes will wind up on top of each other. And so one of the most common student uh, 
horrors or worries or stresses is that they finish entering the text boxes and they're ugly. So I like to remind you that you need to hit the save button. So let's go ahead and sit, hit that just so we can see what it looks like. I see my number one, that's where that box is. Here's my four text boxes and here's my number four box. But then I also notice that I have files and I have comments down at the bottom. I wanna make sure to take that off of each and every page that I'm creating in my website. And so I will wanna to go to more and I will wanna to go to page settings. In the page settings, you will remove subpages, remove allow attachments, and remove allow comments. And the reason I don't like attachments or comments to be added, remember these are unmonitored comments and attachments. So there's nothing worse than giving students the right to be able to post whatever they want on your website. So I like to close those off just to keep yourself safe. Now you can click here so that this page shows up on the sidebar and I am going to click that and then I'm going to hit save. Now you'll notice that that page does show up in the navigation bar but the home page doesn't and I will show you at a, in a later video how to make that happen. So now I'm ready to go back in and edit my text boxes with some real content. And so I'm going to go into the World War One. I. I double click, nothing happens. You'll notice that down at the bottom you have properties, left, center, and right aligned, wrap on, wrap off, or remove. We need to click on the properties tab. We're going to go here, remove our reminder. And then I'm going to go into some website um, whichever websites you want and I will actually look up World War One um, timeline would be a good one so let's pull that up the history place that's World War Two, which is fine this is a good reference for World War Two. so I'm going to copy the URL I'm going to go back into my resources page, cancel World War II, and go into, cancel World War I, go into World War II. And the title of that was the history place. In order to make it a link, you highlight it, click the link button, make sure you choose web address, and then paste in your URL. I like to have this checked so that the when you click on that link it opens up in a new t in a new window or new tab um, so that the students don't lose your website and then I click OK there is my first link I hit save I hit save again and I can see my link now when they click on that they go to my website so what you're going to do is you're going to include four links for each of the four chunks that you have chosen to create. The numbers one and four should not be on your website, so you will make sure not to have those there, and you will just add in the content areas to those content chunks. That is all for resources page. Come back to video number four so that we can work on the calendar page.